So guys, we're um, about to jump into the Newcastle game. I'm in my first season, and we are all just past Christmas. We're actually approaching New Year now, so the transfer window's reopening. We're in the middle of a takeover, um, so I've got a transfer embargo slapped on my ass, unfortunately. Hopefully, that will be done with soon, so I can actually start looking at players and consider who we are going to sign. I need to get a top quality striker. That's top of my Christmas list at the moment. As you can see, we're fourth, so it's going reasonably well. I've had some really, really disappointing results. Uh, a couple of shock results, which I was happy with. We've maybe gained three to six points, you could argue, that I would not have expected to get. However, we've probably dropped a good eight to nine points that I'm disappointed with. So, swings in roundabouts. <clears throat> got Everton away coming up it's gonna be a tough game I think I'm gonna go with Naps Sicilian tactic I think that's probably gonna be the wisest choice um, I need to do some switching about a little bit because I was resting players in the last game so that needs sorting out Yeah, I don't want Guerri up front. I'd rather have uh, my main man, top goal scorer, Joe Wellington. He's back from a bit of a knock, which is good news. They've had a great partnership, Selk and Joe Wellington. 16, Joe Wellington, 8 for Selk. And Selk hasn't played every single game either. So he's been very impressive. <clears throat> We'll have Guerrero on the branch. Don't want him off it. I wouldn't mind starting Sam Maximum, to be honest. I'm not giving him a proper run out in the team. Cliver can play from either side, so. Where is. Bowen? Yeah, he's still injured. It's, like, it's not like I can bring Bowen in. If there's any issues with the sound quality, guys, uh, if you're not happy with the volume of the music against the volume of the mic, vice versa, let me know. Just hit me up in the comments and I'll sort it out. Right, so we've got Almir on at the moment and Cliver. Like I say, I'm going to try Sam Maximan because I think he's probably the better option. Everything else looks pretty good. Sosa, I am not sure about I think we'll have him off it's gonna be a tough game I can't be risking carrying players and so has been decent this season but he's not really lit the league up Yedlin I want that pace down the flank as well because Everton have got some fast players I think that probably about does it Right, see this is difficult. Gouir is wanted on loan. Now, the sensible thing to do here would probably be allow him to go if he's going to get first team football. You see they're caught the same, he's going to be a squad player. No, I'm not having that. I'm going to see what happens with this takeover because if the new owners come in, give us some money, not that we haven't got any, but obviously they're going to renew the transfer budgets and they may give me naff all. If I end up with some money, then I want to go and sign someone like Haaland, I think. That would be the plan. If I can get Haaland, or maybe even the striker from Wolves, possibly, um, Jota, one of those two I'd be very happy with. Here we go. So, Everton, away from home. Tough game, like I say. Their preferred formation is a 4-2-3-1. Now, that means there's going to be quite a few attacking midfielders. My thoughts with that are, if we use the Sicilian tactic um, with two defensive midfielders, that should hopefully provide quite a good block. 
The only slight worry is it is quite a high line that you use in the Sicilian. It's not very high, but it is quite high. Whereas my other tactic that I've been using is just a flat 442, but it uses a deeper line. <clears throat> there we are. Yeah, a, a lower defensive line. Much lower than what we've been using with the Sicilian. Now, on what foot are these two guys? So, Joellington's right foot. Selk is also right foot. Yeah, we'll keep it as it is like that, I think. Right, here we go. Here we go. No room for errors. It's going to be a tough game. <clears throat> I'm a bit relieved to see that Moise Keane isn't on the pitch, although Richarlison's going to cause us trouble. And they've got Gomez, their playmaker, on as well. So I do think we've picked the right tactic. I'm happy enough with that. I need to slow this down, actually. I sped it up last night while I was playing. Yedlin. Could cross. Oh, yes. Is it allowed? Get in. Justin Cliver, you little Dutch legend. It's actually Yedlin with the cross, I think, in the end, was it? Yes. Very well picked out. And Justin Cliver scores. Just with that. Early days in the game, though, this could end up being a proper Kevin Keegan style match. You go, we go. Be nice just to dominate, but unfortunately, when you come up against a decent team away from home, eesh, especially with the defence we've got, it's not going to happen. Fucking hell. That's frustrating. That is frustrating. There's not a lot of marking going on there. Lots of players back and very little marking. Hmm. Starting to wonder about this formation in this game, to be honest. I wonder if games like this I'm going to need to bloody go even more defensive. Come on. Good ball, Cliver. Oof. Nearly. We're getting chances. It just feels like the chances we're getting are harder to stick away. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nearly repeated the first goal. Very close. They're having a bit of joy with that overload down down the wing. Go on. Someone stick it in the net. Come on. Oh, Selk. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go on. Oh, how did he miss? Ow. Rubbish. We've had all sorts of chances, loads of shots, a lot of them coming from set pieces, but God, he's going to fuck it up. It always does. I think Sam Maximan's maybe got one goal all season. Finishing a 10, no under. Come on, get a foot in. There we go. Go on. These chances are killing me.
come on. Do the goal before half time. Not like that, you're not. Not like that. That's frustrating. <sighs> it's a bit irritating, isn't it? Lots and lots of chances, but we just can't stick anything away. This is set up for them to hit us on the break as well. At least it's not just us that are missing clear cut chances. Come on. We might get to the second half and then maybe get to the fiftieth, sixtieth minute. I'm gonna to have to review the players, I think, if we I think I don't think the tactic is an issue. The tactic's getting us opportunities to score. It's also conceding some, but uh, um, it's the players. They're not they're not taking them. Question is, who's going to come off? I think Selk will probably be one of the first ones I'll bring off. Go on. And um, one of the wingers. I'm not sure which yet. We'll see what happens in the next five minutes. We're so close to the top four as well. If we can get a win in games like this, it'll make all the difference. In fairness, I would see this as two points gained rather than two points dropped if we did draw. I wouldn't want to lose, definitely not. But um, Everton are a decent team and it is a way for more. Come on, Max, man. Go on. Get the ball in. Yedlin's crossing is awful. Need to look for a new right back. And Clive hurts like the Duracell bunny, he just keeps going, but he's got no end product whatsoever. So you can't keep going all game, missing opportunities, and expect to win. Come on. Throw on. Oh. Right. Yedlin's done my nutting, to be honest. Don't really have an opportunity to replace him there, so we're going to have to stick as we are, unfortunately. I'm going to bring Gueri on for Selk. And I think we're probably going to have to bring some Maximam off and get Almir on. on. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I want another option for um, another option. Up front, possibly. Both strikers have been awful, in fairness. How is everyone tonight? We all uh, playing FM? Which which teams are we with? Yeah, he's going to be way offside anyway. Come on, get the ball in. Oh, he's going to take them all on. Right, one more change. That's what we've got. Brewster's coming on. And that's us exhausted all our options. We've got great wingers that can create chances. They're really fast, skillful players. But when it comes to end product, whether it's that last pass or a shot on goal, they're just awful. I think Bowen's the only one who I think's got a bit of end product about him. And he's injured. It's not like I can really change much tactically when when you've had 25 shots and I know only 11 to be on target but we still had 11 shots on target a couple of clear cut chances as well the chances we've been missing really we should be sticking them away which is why I want to look for a real high quality striker when that transfer window is uh, well it is open now when when this takeover bid's finished Come on, if we can muster just one more good opportunity. See, why are you passing? You've got free roam there down that wing, and you're passing. 
Come on, somebody put the ball in. Nice tackle, very well tackled. Right, Shah's on a book and we better tell him to ease off before he gets sent off. Oh, what a goal! Sensational. That was a brilliant effort. Just as I was saying that none of my wingers, including Almeron, have any end product. I don't know why he was waiting around there. And I don't know what the keeper was doing. Doing a little jeté. We will take that. Right. Time to... Go to cautious. We will slow pace down. Um, play for the set piece. And I need to. Where is it? Sorry, there it is. Time waste. Okay. Got a couple of minutes to hold on here. Go on, Brewster. Go airy. Run it, run it. Just stay in the corner. Waste time. It's on for a reason. Out wide. Yep. Come on. Just want to see that clock dwindle down to nothing. Willems. Clivert. Cut back. Oh, he's offside. Bloody hell, four minutes of injury time. Where has that come from? Be gutted if we uh, don't come away with a winner. Excellent. That's good. Just 30 seconds left, guys. And this will be a massive win for us after some of the results we've had. Oh, go on, Clive. But you've got the legs. Run. What, what are you doing? Frustrating. But we got the win. That's what matters. Excellent. Time to see what everyone else does. A plus to summarise. That's good. They're very disappointed about the 2-1 defeat against Brighton. You're disappointed. How do you think I feel? Those are the results that made me finally switch up a little bit with the tactics. I think we lost to Brighton. We lost. To, we drew to Sheffield United at home. That was a shocker. We lost um, at home to Crystal Palace after getting a red card in the first three minutes. And we got absolutely thumped away from home to Leicester. So, I mean, that's... Uh, how many points did we drop there? We got one point in out of 12 from games I would have expected us to come away with at least nine points. So that's a lot of points dropped there. But when you're coming out of it and you're beating Everton away, uh, we just also beat... Uh, we got a draw against Man City away. We beat Crystal Palace away as well. That was a good result. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're on the up, I think. On the up. Who are you? Hmm. Um... Let's have a look. Right, well, Hayden can go out on the loan. There's no point in him being here. We also need to have a mass clear out now because this squad is massive. Absolutely huge. Dwight Gale is not going to get played. So we shall sell him at any price. And who else? Muto needs to go. He's actually wanted, but only on loan. I think we'll actually just offer him straight out. See if we can't muster some interest in him. I'd accept three million because I just want rid now, to be honest. I was trying to get a stupid amount before. My own fault, really. And I, I reckon that's not a bad start. Lejeune, I wouldn't mind getting rid of him, to be honest. He's a decent player, but he just doesn't really fit the mould of what I'm trying to do here. I do want ball-playing defenders, which he is. My issue with him is the speed 
um, is quite slow and if we're trying to play that higher line we're going to get caught out over the top we could also do with signing a right back really because I haven't been convinced by Yedlin and Kraft he's alright but he's, he's not the future that's for definite Andy Carroll has just been a pain in the ass. I'm really struggling to get rid of him and he's not going to fit my system no matter what so he needs to go Oh, there's been a bid for Muto already. Cool. We'll take it. Anything. Anything. <laughs> Finances are looking very respectable, considering. We're play, paying instalments for a lot of the transfers I got at the start of the season. So I thought we'd have started to see a, a pretty big dip by now. But not as yet, which is nice. Hmm. That's good. So we're probably raising not far off 10 million there from those two transfers. Blocked. What? The board feel Lejeune could be sold for more money. Talking to him about this. I think the board should reconsider blocking the sale of Lejeune. I think the board should reconsider blocking the sale of Lejeune as I have no intention of playing him. Darren. The board appreciate your comments. After discussing things, we are pleased to announce that we agree. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. For the first time, a Newcastle fan has ever heard positive words from you. In fairness, he actually upped my um, wage budget at the start of the season, which was a huge help. It helps us get some really good players, which I don't think we'd have been able to get without it. So... You've got to give him credit where it's due. So he's saying there's some offers, but I can't see where. Moving on. Anyone who's just joined the stream, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're playing with Newcastle. Um, the idea was to try and emulate Keegan's style of play, just to try and spice the game up a little bit. Now trying to get rid of Andy Carroll because he does not suit what I'm trying to do at all. I'm not, see, that's really annoying. Why would I sell Dwight Gale for nothing? Are you for real? Like, is that is that actually it? Is that all I'm getting offered? Nothing. I'm really confused by that. Piss off. I am not letting you have him for now. He's worth a lot more. Right, let's try. When does his deal expire? Ah, that's why his deal expires. That is why. Right, okay, I'm being thick. Right, we'll, we'll try again anyway. We'll try offering him out for 5 million. There we go. I'm still under this really irritating transfer embargo. Um, I, I really, really, really want to go and sign a big striker. Someone like Alan Shearer style. Just go and break the bank on someone. I've got a bit of a budget to do it. I can use instalments to try and um, extend that. And I've got my eye on two players at the moment. Haaland. I'd absolutely love to sign him. I think it'd be freaking awesome in this system. And my other one that I actually really like is going to cost an absolute bomb, and that's Diego Jota. But I, gee, I'm very doubtful I'll be able to afford him on both fronts, wage and uh, transfer fee. So it's probably going to be Haaland that I'll try and get. Board still in the middle of the takeover, so I'm under an embargo, which is really frustrating. Right, so no interest. Um, discuss. So I didn't sanction the deals I want to keep you on. Nope. Um, I don't think you're going to get much football. I made the decision as I wanted to lose you. It's a load of rubbish. The finances weren't right. I'll sell you, mate, for freaking anything, really. Four million, I'd be happy with. But nobody wants you. 
Well, we'll keep trying. No point in having someone rotting on the bench, is there? This is the problem when you don't play a player and you ain't able to get rid of him in pre-season. They end up sitting there, rotting away, and then no one is interested in even making a bid. I may well have to accept that he's going to go for nothing with the way this is going. I think we'll lower it down to 2 million. See where that gets us. Got the FA Cup coming up, chaps, so I'm probably going to rest some players for that. It would be bad to go out at home to Peterborough, but I've got Man City in the League Cup semi-final and then Burnley at home. I want to play my strongest team for both games, so it would be very wise to get them rested up. Mm. Tottenham going in for Driuzzi. He would have been one of the options I was looking at. I just thought it was too expensive in my opinion. And anyone who's not just silent watching out there, who's, who's going to be getting involved in the chat, I'd love to know if you've had this issue. Um, I always go into transfers and look under youth intake, but I ain't getting now. Ah, right. He's, he might no. Yeah, you see, it's not. It's not working. It's not populating anything, which is wrong. It should be because I know for a fact there has been some youth intake. I know that for a fact. Um, let's try just selecting a country as well. Yep, nothing there. And I know that some of the Brazilian teams have already had some youth intake and nothing there. That's annoying. So they reckon that Peterborough are going to play a 4-1-4-1. Well, I'm going to go with my Zeus tactic. And like I say, as promised, the kids are going to get a chance. I may or may not be a kid, but I am going to play him. Long staff, you can have a game. Shelby. Souza. Definitely want to play Vavro. I don't want him getting pissed off at the lack of game time. Anjouin's back, that's good news. I'm going to wait for the next game, though, to play him. Lascelles can play again. Kraft, instead of Yedlin. And I think we're about there with that, chap. So let's get into the match engine and see what these guys have to offer. Yeah, Bowen should hopefully be okay for next game. He might be a little bit unfit, but should be okay. Right, third round of the FA Cup. We've then got Man City at home in the League Cup semi-final, of which we were so lucky to get even get into. We were crap against Norwich, and I can't even remember who else we played. I think it might have been Crystal Palace. We were awful in both games. Should have gone out. Went for on penalties in both. So we're, luck is definitely on our side in that competition. Definitely. Good ball. I don't know what you're doing there. You're a strike. You should be going to score, not pass. This is the difficult... Oh, no. What? See, that's two players went in for the tackle and not one of them could make it. The difficult thing with the team that I've got is Joelinton and Selk are both good in the air and quite good all-round strikers. They're powerful. They're strong. My other two, my backups, Gawiri and um, Brewster, are complete pole opposites. They're fast, skillful, um, kind of technically talented strikers. So they're, they're the other way around altogether. What I've found so far is the stronger, and this is unusual for me, usually I need the more technical strikers, but I've found that the, the stronger and more aerially dominant strikers have been much better. Purely because a lot of the chances we've been having have been from crosses. Ooh. I don't like the way they've been getting in behind a couple of times. A 
offside. Good. Good ball. <sighs> One on ones, guys. I am pretty sure you'll be in the same camp as me on that. I, I don't think that SI have done enough to sort it. In fact, they seem to get better, and then since they had that hot fix, it's gone back to square one again. So I don't know what they've changed, but it's frustrating. We're now, what, halfway through December, and we've still not got a match engine that works properly? Now, I know Miles will argue that, which is fair enough. He's entitled to his opinion. Um, but his argument is always based on the end result and the statistics at the end of the game. What he's not talking about is what is actually happening in the match getting, what we're actually seeing in the match engine with these missed chances. That was great. Both strikers linking up nicely there. You see Brewster with his speed getting in behind. This is, well, that acceleration, that speed, you know, straight off the bat. That's what we're missing um, with Joe Ellington. Thanks, Kyle. Much appreciated, mate. Very good of you. And thanks for the raid as well, mate. Longstaff. Almiron. <sighs> Ruby Shaw. This should be a straightforward game. Resting all my players. Have them nice, fit and ready for the Man City game in the League Cup semi-final. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And then we can hopefully kick on from there and get a result in the next league game because we're not far off, not far off top, let alone top four. So come the end of the season, we could actually be fighting on all fronts. It just depends how it goes. I don't think we will be. I do think we'll end up dropping points. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed. One shop. Hey, mate. Thanks for joining again. That's two nights in a row. People will start talking, mate. Go on. Very nice. Yes, I am a, a Toon fan myself, Carl. It's nice to see us actually getting some results for a change. And I think Bruce, to be honest, to be fair to him, he's done an admirable job under pressure and taken a lot of shit when he hasn't necessarily needed to. But I must admit, I respect the way he stood up for himself as well with the media because some of the stuff that was coming out and being said was pure lies and bollocks. So it's, uh, it's good to see. There we are, 4-0. I'm happy with that. It's a good, good start. I'm also really happy with the fact that Guerrero is getting on the score sheet because he's had a bit of a barren spell. Brewster's actually been doing better than him and he's only on loan. So I don't want to get too attached to Brewster because there's no way Liverpool will part with him. Should never say never, I suppose, but... Um, they, weren't, they weren't prepared to even talk about a transfer before I loaned him, so can't see it. Maximum is so good in this game. Yeah, he, he's the problem I've had, mate, is he is brilliant and he takes everybody on. I've just had issues with his finishing. He just seems to keep sticking the ball wide. Now, in fairness, he's not the only winger that's doing that, so it's probably just down to the system as well. But... Um, I think I'm also a little bit on the side of wanting to develop Cliver, so I'm probably maybe favouring him when I shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you're probably statistically right there as well, Carl. So it's, um, yeah, everyone was on the wrath for bus, weren't they? They all, we all thought, yes, this guy's a saviour, but to be honest, the way he left, the way he left the club as a fan, I wasn't very happy with it. I think he, he tried to use the fact that everybody hates Ashley as a scapegoat for himself and to cover up the fact that he didn't really want to be there. Um, he did something very similar with Liverpool 
and I think the way when he left to China and then just wouldn't drop it, he wouldn't let it go. He kept coming out to the media and talking bollocks, um, just constantly rehashing. It's like, right, move on. We've all moved on now. Can we just get on with this? Let Bruce get his feet under the table, stop interfering and trying to cause more shit between the fans and Ashley. Let's just get on with it. Right, we are going to make a couple of changes. I think I want Gueri off for the very reason that he may be needed off the bench in the next game. There we go. Lovely stuff. Thanks to everyone for joining the stream. Thanks for the raid, Carl, and all of his followers who have stick around. It is much appreciated. If you guys enjoy the idea of a Newcastle save, this is <clears throat> excuse me, the idea of trying to emulate Keegan's style of play, so attacking, exciting football. That's what I'm doing to start with. I'm trying to build a young squad as I do it, and I'm eventually going to implement um, something I call the youth, go youth to cold system. Um, it's a little thing I came up with many, many years ago and wrote about on footballmanagerstory.com. It's not original at all. Loads of people have been doing it, but I put a few rules to it. And it involves basically buying players below a certain age and below a certain amount to be able to sell them at a net profit percentage uh, margin. So that basically your selling and buying of players funds the club and turns you into a billion pound club. But also the players are brought in three years before they need to be brought through into the first team so they've got enough time to be integrated or to be loaned out if they need to develop out on loan that's the idea so it's going to take some time for me to get that in place but that's why i'm really excited about this because it could be a real long-term uh, save for us i'm just wanting to win as much silverware as possible that was close Oh, Brewster, he's in. Oh, my God. These clear-cut chances are doing my head in. Eight. Eight clear-cut chances. We scored four goals, so I shouldn't complain. It's People have got it much worse, and I've seen much worse myself. But still, some of the chances that we're missing are very frustrating. Selk, Cliver, get the ball in. Come on then, Wan Chop, you've got to tell us who it is. Uh, so the greatest scout slash physio. 19, 19 scouting and 20 physio. Go on then, mate. Let's be let's be having you. What, uh, who is it? Because I could probably do with some more scouts, in fairness. Well, we've absolutely bossed this. Here we go. Keel in. Shall we have a look, guys? Let's see what this guy is like. Keel in. There we go. Whoa. Somebody needs to lay off the pies a bit. Jesus. Jeez, yeah. 15 adaptability as well. Level of discipline's good. Determination. Tell you what, that's a, that's a good shout, mate. That is a good shout. And he wants to sign. As a chief scout. Do I have a chief scout? I don't know if I do, you know. Tell you what, before we do that... You see, I should know this. This is terrible, isn't it? I should know if we have a chief scout or not. Let's check. No, we don't. Right. I think I've just found my new chief scout. Or should I say, been found for me. Thank you very much for that. Two and a half grand a week as well. That is brilliant. In you come, lad.
and Steve Nicholson. Let's see what he is like. See, I don't really... What do you guys do? I mean, I don't pay an awful lot of attention to data analysts. Now, this is probably my ignorance being an oldie and playing FM since God knows when. Steve Nixon. There we go. Yeah, you see, I'm... I am not going to be keeping you around as my chief scout. That's for sure. I wonder if I can offer him a contract as a scout if he'd accept it, rather than as chief. Nah, he's not interested, is he? Well, I'm sorry, mate, but you're going to have to go. There we go. Yeah, I've, I've done quite a bit with my staff in general, so like my coaching team. It's not perfect, but it's half decent. What I haven't done is anything with my data analysts. It's a whole game tonight, isn't it? If it is anyone watching it? against Charlton. I used to live in London actually and um, me and my mates we used to get to watch Charlton most weekends they were at home. Back then it was so cheap as well. We were students so we had a student card. We used to get in the stadium for 15 quid. You could jump on the train and I think we paid something like £6 on student card to get there. So for like 30 quid you had a proper weekend out, bit of crap food, football, you can't do that no more. I mean, that's back when they were in the Premier League as well. That's back when we had Darren Bent. That's how long ago it was. Those were the days. Lejeune is leaving the club. Ta-ta. Well, this takeover still isn't done. I hope this new owner, if he does buy the club, don't come in, wipe out everything I've built in terms of the players I've sold to build up my transfer budget. That would be really irritating. As you can see, we it's a bit of a weird run we've got coming up. So let's go to the schedule quickly and I'll show you what I mean. There we go. So we've got Burnley, Leicester and Man City all at home. But we've then got a way to West Ham, Man City, Arsenal... And then we're at home to Man United and Chelsea. That batch of fixtures there, that will probably determine the season. Whether we're fighting for Champions League, Europa League, or possibly, dare I say it, even pushing and challenging top spot. I can't see it happening. I could see us crumbling, to be honest. We might get a couple more good results, but I really don't think we're going to come away from those big fixtures with results. I've sent my scout out um, around a couple of players, so there'll be a few reports coming through it. See, Fabio Silva, has anyone signed him? I'd love to get this kid. He's only 17, so much potential. And you look at how rounded all those attributes are. He could be anything, any type of striker you want. Maybe not a pressing forward as such, but definitely anything complete, advanced, even poacher, target man. Problem is, it costs a ridiculous amount of money, so I'll be in dreamland to get him. Haaland. Do not want to sell. But he's extremely interested. That's really good, because at the start of the season... He had absolutely no interest in a transfer at all. How are you only rating him 69? How is that even possible? Currently operating at Premier League level would be a good signing. Good. Just good. It's Haaland. Freaking amazing signing. There's barely any weaknesses. Let's have a quick look at the overview and see what he's like in comparison to the rest. Yeah, you see, how is that just a... Good signing, that's barmy. 
Anyway, moving on. This kid is incredible as well, isn't he? Only 17. 86 million release clause. Yeah. I think we'll, uh, that's probably what we'd have to pay as well to get him. These are some terrible scouting suggestions, these. Why on earth would I want any of these guys? Let's quickly get through these guys and then we're going to jump straight into the next game. See, Ran, that's not a bad suggestion in fairness. 20 million is a fair bit of money, but he's not terrible. I do need to look at a right back actually. That's the other thing I'm going to have to start um, scouting for as well. But until this transfer um, embargo is lifted, there's no point in trying to do anything. Right, Sheffield United at home in the cup, so that is really good news. It means I may be able to rest some more players again because if we're still in the League Cup, then the final might fall around a similar time. We don't. Oh, you joking? I got rid of my chief scout and now he's accepted new deal. Arsehole. I wonder if I. That is annoying. Consortium, pull the plug. <sighs> oh well. You know what that means, guys? Who thinks Haaland will come? Do the old trick. Sixties, yeah. I can't really fault that. Right. Let's try that again. The reason I came out and went back in is because they'd I'd forgotten to lock the amount they could ask for in uh, percentage of next sale. The whole point of the used to gold system is we buy these players and we can sell them on for a profit. Now, with the sort of money they're asking for, I don't think that's possible anyway, but it'll be completely impossible if they're asking to take away that sort of money. 40% or 30% of the transfer is just ridiculous. I'm not really sure he's worth. He's brilliant. He really is a great player, but I'm not sure he warrants paying this sort of money. Fucking hell. We'll keep chipping away at it. I also want to look at Diego Jota as well, because he's one that would be superb um, in this system, I think. And also, he can... Diego Jota, what am I on about? Diogo, idiot. He can double up as well um, as possibly a player out wide if I need him to. So, I have a feeling that Wolves are going to be asking ludicrous amounts of money for him though. So, I don't hold much hope. <laughs> are you kidding me? He's a good player, but he's not 100 odd million. Nah, fuck off. That is ridiculous. Right, well, that throws a bit of a spanner in the works, doesn't it? Anyone else got any uh, recommendations for strikers? We're looking for raw speed, um, just a, a sort of striker that can make something happen, but young as well. That is really important. I want a young striker. Now, the other guy I have my eye on, I was kind of avoiding making an offer because he's not ready to have a big impact yet. But if I can't get any of the others, I may well go in for Esposito. 
he is potentially amazing. In fact, let's have a quick look and see what Inter Milan want for him. I don't know if you've seen his future development. Um, I did a post about him on Football Manager's story. He, his physicals just become like out of this world. Really, really exceptional. Um, and that's the sort of striker that I like to use. He needs signing. I'll tell you what, that is not bad at all. That's for a player of his potential. I think he's minus nine. That is actually not too bad. Money-wise, not too bad at all. Now, I'm not, because I don't think as well, the Haaland deal is going to happen. Purely for the reason that the sort of money they're asking for and more the fact that they pulled out of the bid so quickly after I only upped it slightly, I just I just can't see it happening. I really can't. Right, we are underdogs. The question is, is it right to do a 4-4-2 or should I go with the defensive midfielders? I think we'll go with this. We'll go with this. I am at home, away from home, I can switch it up, can I? I can change it. The two beasts up front. Guiri Clivert, yee. He's not impressed me recently, in all honesty, Clivert. He's had a couple of assists, which has been nice to see, but I'm not convinced at the moment. I'll give him another chance because, in all honesty, I'm more bothered about the league at the moment than I am about the League Cup. I know we're quite far in the competition and it seems daft to possibly throw it away, but... I've really got the bit between my teeth about getting into the top four if we can this year. At the start of the season, I said I'd accept Europa League, but I really, really, really want top four because you can just, it's there, it's so close. And if we threw that away, it'd be a big shame. Right, here we go. Man City, I've already played them once this season away from home. That game ended with a 2-2 draw and we conceded in a goal with the last kick of the game from Bernardo Silva. So, a little bit of a nightmare still hanging over me from that game. In all reality, I probably should have switched my tactics up a little bit Ooh, um, after we went 2-1 ahead, but I stayed stubborn thinking we're playing that well, we'll just carry on. And unfortunately, they scored a wonder goal. They're playing a full strength squad, but oh, I see that that's the position. Well, not on the opposite side is where he was when he scored in the last game. Dubravka, come on, Willems, get the ball through the middle. Eek. Shooting's just awful. And this is where stats can be so misleading because we just had three shots there, all within the same move, all should not have been taken. They should have been passed or carried on dribbling. And that has increased our shots from three up to six. So we've had, which tells us we've had double the amount of shots that in reality we've had. Oh yes. Oh, thank you very much. Whoever you were, thank you for that back pass. That was very kind. Who was that then? So Cliver, Bruno, is that? Oh, Laporte, Laporte. And this is why um, higher line of engagement, regardless if you have a, a deep defensive line or not, is quite good in this patch. 
because the defenders seem to dilly dally sometimes on the ball, especially with teams like Man City where they like to play out from the back. Good ball over the top, he's in, is he? Oh, wow. <laughs> that is how you do it. I'll have some of that. Ball over the top. Selk. Bottom corner. Boom. Chuffed. Bernardo again. Oh, God, he's the vein of my life. He really is. Just realised the music's run out. I've been talking so much. Let's try and find you something else, guys. Not that. We've listened to that a million and one times. Oh, classical music. I don't think you want to listen to that on a Friday night, do you? It's back to that one, I'm afraid, guys, until I find some more music. Um, we've got a comment. Uh, not sure how big of a database you have loaded, but check out Joe Arico. Yeah, I'm not sure he will come up, pal. I'll have a look, but um, I've not heard of him. I've done quite a lot of scouting for, for the website, so but I'll definitely check him out because... We certainly need to look at a right back and a striker. Well, I'm happy with the first half performance. To limit Man City to five shots and only two on target is really good going. So the tactic's definitely working. And it's nice to see that both strikers are on the score sheet as well. Uh, wow. These shots from outside the area are killing me. Uh, looks to be an absolute stud GK coach. Maybe for you, side. Cool. Yeah, I'll have a look, mate. Oh, my God. See, this is this is FM, minute. It's literally just in the space of, what, five minutes, you go from being comfortable, kicking ass, to all of a sudden it's like, shit, are we actually going to throw this whole thing away? Right, Clivert's coming off because he's been fucking useless. So Maximum can come on to cause some trouble... I think Beltran can come off for Shelby because Shelby's got a bit of magic in that foot, hasn't he? Um, he's a good passer. And I'm going to have Joelinton off. I know he's scored and he's played reasonably well, but Gueri had a cracking last game, so I'm hoping that he can carry that form into this match. There we go. Coming under a little bit of pressure now. It's what we do from here. I could change. I could go back to the more defensive tactic. My concern with that is we might just be inviting pressure on. But then again, we are, we're we defending deep here anyway, so I think it probably won't make a much difference. Come on, get a foot in. So don't mind when they're having chances like that. You know, when they're getting the ball crossed in and they're constantly having it on the edge of the area. or oh, nearly. I'm fine with that because I don't think they're going to score. It's just when they're dribbling forward and they get to the edge of that area, you're just waiting for that shot to come off. So Maximum booked. Let's get him easy enough tackles. I've learnt my lesson this season. I think we've had about four red cards so far. Three times we got the red cards, it screwed the game up and ended up costing us points. We could probably be top if it wasn't for the mistakes, i.e. the red cards. Um, oh, how did you miss? It was probably easier to score than it was to hit the post from there. Would have to hire him as a coach instead of a goalkeeping coach. Five pound a week. Let's have a look. 
Yedlin. Go on, hunt the ball down. Oh wow, he does look good, doesn't he? We'll pull him up in a second, guys. Um, but one shot's found a pretty bloody good goalkeeping coach. Thanks, mate. Thunderster. I like that username. Do I keep calling you that? Or um, have we got a real name, mate? Well, that's a good result. I am happy, happy, happy with that. So we've got the second leg coming up. 2-1 is teetering on the edge of being a little bit precarious for my liking. But having said that, We'll take it, because I think we can go to their place and maybe get a draw. Right, here we go, guys. We are going for Esposito. Do, 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 do. Sorry about the song. I'm actually not going to... Nah, I'll lower it a bit and see what he says. He's accepted. Hmm. That is good news. There you go. Our new striker. The 17-year-old wonder kid. Excellent. Right, now I just want to try and see what happens with this Haaland deal. May come off, may not. We'll see. I'm waiting for them to respond. <laughs> Go for it, one shot. He is a cracking find, mate. Keep them coming. Right, let's have a quick look at uh, Joe Arico. We're looking at guys. This is the goalkeeping coach, and I'm not sure I have a big enough database for him to show up. No, I don't. That is a big shame. Oh well. Righty. Yeah, I do need an under-21 manager. Oh, Les Ferdinand. How fitting is that? Play like Keegan, bring Les Ferdinand in as the director of football. That is really tempting. He's useless in terms of negotiating. He's tempting, though. Lee Fraser, I don't think so. See, some of these suggestions are just stupid. You can call me Funster or Kane. I don't mind. I think we'll go with... To start with Kane, and then when my memory runs out, it'll probably be back to Funster. Anyone watching the whole game, guys? So I've got it there. So if I keep turning around every now and again, that is why. In fact, if you guys want me to, I can turn the volume up on the TV um, and turn the music off. Let me know which you would prefer. Um, I don't mind doing that at all. Right, so we're on 40 points in fourth place, but we're only one point above Arsenal. Now, I am quietly comfortable with the teams below us, below Arsenal, and we're only six points off top, so there's a lot to play for in the season, I really do, oh here we are, here we go, right now they're negotiating, Right, guys, I'm afraid I'm going to need your help here. What do you think? Do we sign Haaland, or is that too much money? 
So the total amount there, I mean, there's 11 and a half million and then another 55 million in uh, installments. Is it worth it? 66 and a half million pound for Haaland. I do like him. I've wanted to sign him since the start of the season. It does seem like a lot of money though. Does seem like a lot of money. The Esposito deal isn't going to cost us a lot initially, and I could possibly send him out on loan. Current record in terms of goals, he's got nine from nineteen. Basically, the tactic I'm playing: balls in behind and over the top. Are pretty important and we're getting a lot of goals in the air as well that's why I really like him because he can do a bit of everything I know he's not technically great but I don't need that I don't have supporting strikers I have strikers that attack so they need to be pretty single minded yeah Percy and Strong you are right there Kane right, what we're going to do is we're going to go with that we're going to accept it And hope I don't regret it. Um, and we'll see what wages he wants. Jesus, that was quick. Fucking hell. See, that's quite high wage. But I am paying worse players similar amounts of money. Okay, he's got no crazy requests. That's a good thing. The first thing I need to do... Oh, you arsehole. Minimum fee release of 79 million. <laughs> that instantly tells me that you can fuck off. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, to be fair, 79 million, if someone came in with an offer of that, they'd have to offer it up front. That is a big chunk of money to get in one go, and it's still profit. Right, I would definitely want that, Lauren. I'm going off this deal based on the fact that he wants um, that minimum fee release clause in there, to be honest. And I'm not liking the contract he's asking for either. But let's see if he'll be flexible. Uh, no, there isn't, mate. He's locked it. He basically, the second I made him the offer on the contract, um, he came back and he'd locked that uh, minimum fee release clause. Now, if I'd have come out of the game and gone back in, then yeah, I could have probably started the negotiation again, this time putting the minimum fee release clause on there myself and locking it so he couldn't do that. He would have either rejected the contract straight away or it would have worked. However, that would be cheating. And we're not about that here. So, unfortunately, mate, I kind of fucked that up myself from the start. I know I'm paying like 60 million for him and his release clause is very close to that. But like I say, that is an upfront payment they'd have to make. And it's not to say that we won't be able to offer him a contract after his first year. So, I honestly just want a striker that can score lots of goals because we're on the cusp of possibly getting into yes, Ken has signed his new deal, that's great, so we can probably get him out on loan now. Um we're on the cusp of getting into Champions League and I feel like he is the sort of player that could be the difference. So proposed playing time, I want it to be important. Training facilities. I'm assuming this is a minimum. Ah, fuck that. I'm not prattling about with that. Let's just offer him out on loan. I ain't bothered about retrieving any of the money in terms of his wage either. It'd be pointless.
there we go. Still nil nil in the whole game, guys. 27 minutes gone. We've actually got Bowen from Hull um, in this save. As you probably noticed uh, in the last game, he was playing from the left wing. Yeah, well, that's that's the other thing, isn't it? Um, you're right there, Kane. I think don't want to go paying big money for a player that's going to get injured, but... Did I offer him out for... I offered him out on loan, didn't I? Yeah, whatever. Right. Haaland. The, the, good, the upside is he isn't injury prone. Or at least the scout doesn't think he is, so... Yeah, so 79 million is his release clause. And we're paying 66. So not a lot of profit there. But I'm going to do it based on the fact that worst case scenario, we make a small profit and we move on. I've got a lot of really talented strikers at the club already that will come through. I'm fine with that. This kid is going to do an amazing job for the next two seasons. So best case scenario, we get to snap him up on a new deal and get rid of that irritating little clause in there. He's happy, we're happy, and we're all winning. There you go, Haaland is in the club. Unfortunately, Brewster is gonna suffer now, but he's only on loan, so that is fair enough. Well, I'm quite excited about that. The other thing it could allow me to do, actually, I could utilise Brewster, but send Guiri out on loan. Because there's loads of clubs interested in him. Yeah, loads of clubs are interested. So, let's put him available for loan. And if we get a good enough offer someone that's uh, to a club that's worth thinking about, well, we'll probably accept it. Yeah, you, you could be right again, Kane. Um, there may well be a risk there with financial fair play. I do think it's worth the risk, though, to be honest. And what you've got to remember as well, mate, is... I've still got... I mean, this season, there definitely isn't a risk. And the reason for that, if you look at my finances, there you go. I've spent a lot of money, but financial fair play goes on your profit and loss in the year. And at the moment, we're doing perfectly fine. That's due to the fact that we're doing all these deals in instalments. So for now, fingers crossed, for now, we're okay. Hopefully it stays that way. Right, I'm going to bring Sosa on for this game because I really want to develop that kid. Um, and if he doesn't play, he's not going to improve. I may even bring Vavro on as well, actually. When's our next game? Now, oh, we've got a little bit of a wait, in fairness. So that's all right. We can, we can maybe throw caution to the wind a little bit and use more of the first teamers. That should do it, I think. Right, let's save it there. Haaland is about to make his debut for Newcastle United. Massive money. However, <laughs> it's worth it in my opinion. Definitely. Who's everyone playing with at the moment um, on the game? I've also got my York City save going, by the way, guys. So um, some streams will be done as the Newcastle one. Some will be done as the York one. At the moment, in the York one, I'm in my second season. And we got promoted from the National League North to the Conference, or National League, as you should call it. 
Ooh, I don't like that formation we're coming up against. Um, there we go. Yeah, so we're in the National League. We're top. We've drawn one game all season, and we're through to the sixth round of the FA Cup. The tactic I'm using is probably far too risky, but we're on such a good... Ooh, nice shot. We're on such a good run that we're actually maintaining the results, which is really good to see. We've got Norwich in the sixth round. If we manage to somehow get through against Premier League Norwich, we could then get a tie against the likes of United, Liverpool, Chelsea in the semi-final. And remember, the FA Cup, if you win it, you're automatically into Europa League, which would just be ridiculous um, for a National League side. I've never done that before, or never even got close to it, to be honest. When I've been in League One, I managed to qualify for the Europa League once, but I've only done that once as well. Um, could be an interesting save. And I think the Norwich game's coming up soon, actually, as well, when I jump into that one. So, uh, Bruno, Maximam, come on. <sighs> right, that's it. Sell Haaland is rubbish. This has got Haaland's debut goal written all over it. Ball in the box. He rises above everyone. Headers home. Just like Alan Shearer. Oh, awful. What are you doing? They do say when you're on a good run of form, you shouldn't change things. So, who knows? Bringing Selk out and putting Haaland in may have been a bit of a mistake. I could have... Possibly waited, but I couldn't help myself. It's quite crowded in the box as well. They're playing those two DMCs. Massive gap in midfield, and then they've got the two danger men up top. But we're creating chances. It's just a little bit hard to get a shot away. Oh, get in. Erling Haaland. See, he's worth it. Every single penny repaired. Maybe not against... Burnley, but um, it's a good start. Nice. That is what we bought him for. I've spent a disgusting amount of money this season. Charlton are 1 0 up, by the way, guys, against Hull. I think Pratt they scored. Shah, Beltran, Clivert. See, he's so irritating on this game. He gets himself into the most amazing positions, just like Sam Maximan does. And then he goes and does that. Oh, Yedlin, what are you doing? What sort of run was that? Brilliant. Can't finish for shit, like, but... Well, so far, not too bad. I'd rather have this game wrapped up and done already. But they are playing an excessively negative tactic. Um, coming up against these sort of systems, I find it really hard to break down. Good ball. Haaland's in. Oh, nearly. Nearly. <laughs> How did I get Mike Ashley to spend so much money? It's these instalments, mate. I started with a 20 million transfer budget. Um, I sold quite a lot of players, so I've, I've boosted it. Nice. Great finish by Beltran. Um, I raised a lot of money by selling players. and Well, not a lot of money, but you know, I've probably at least trebled my transfer budget doing that. And then when I've been making offers for players, we need to make a change. When I've been making offers for players, I've been doing the majority of the offer in instalments. So I haven't really been offering more than five million up front. Generally, if I can get away with it, less than that. So that is the reason, pal. That is the reason. Right, well, we're winning. So I'm going to give Gawari a game up front. And I think we'll probably rest Clivert. 
and Bruno. But yeah, I can, for the life of me, I could never ever see Mike Ashley parting with this sort of cash. It's another booking. We need to be careful of that. Like I said before, I have been shot in the foot a number of times with these bookings turning into red cards. Well, we've absolutely bossed this. 23 shots, 15 on target, four clear cut chances. They haven't even had a shot on target yet. Almiron, go on. Go on, you've got this. Oh, that would have been awesome. All you had to do is just dink it over keeper. Sam Maximum struggling a little bit. By the looks of it. There we go. Not a single shot on target from Burnley. Talk about negative tactics. Harlan scores in his debut. I thank you very much. So we're up to third. Liverpool won again. Man City v Bournemouth. So let's see what they do. Chelsea could only draw with Everton. That is very good news for us because they are two of the teams that were breathing down my neck a little bit for the Champions League spots. So it's basically Arsenal and United. I could do with Arsenal slipping up, to be honest. Fucking look at that. 66 million. Oof. That's fine. I'll offer you out in order. Yep. We don't need you in fairness, mate. Offer out to clubs. Unspecified. Buy. Buy. Sterry. Right, we've got Leicester at home next. This is another one of those games that we need to do um, get a decent result from because we've got a real tough run coming up and quite a lot of fixture congestion as well. That Arsenal away, that is going to be huge for us because if we lose that, it will give them the impetus to go above us. Uh, Burnley. We've had an offer for Guiri, but only as a squad player. I want him as a regular starter. Squad player. If I, want him as a squ if I want him as a squad player, I'll keep him where he is, thank you very much. Frustrating. So those transfers I was offering, I wonder what um, six available to buy or sell. Ah, oh, these are the clauses, aren't they? That's why. So one million there, 500k there, 500k there. So how much would I get for that then? Newcastle Road, another three installments of 393k each. Newcastle will be due 2.3 million after 39 appearances. That's a lot of appearances. Do you know what? I'm going to sell that clause now. There's no point in waiting for something that may never happen. Here we are. This is what I wanted to look at. So, Leon are owed another two instalments of 4 million. Ah, right, I see. So, um, the actual instalments get paid in July. So, we pay them like a year later. That is where the issue may lie. So basically, I'm paying 28 million 
in January of 2021 and then another 28 million the following year. Right, at least now we know where we stand for financial fair play. So the idea, I think the best thing to do will be have the squad pretty nailed down next season and then I'm going to have to start looking at maybe selling some players on and trying to bring some money back in. Otherwise, just like Kane was saying, I might have an issue with financial fair play, possibly. Right, what are you actually suggesting in playing time? Squad player, piss off, no. I might accept the Millwall one though. I know it's at a lower level, but if he can play every week in the Championship, he's far better off than sitting on the bench every week at Newcastle. And I do have a player of the same quality um, in Brewster on loan here. So I think we'll go with that if the offer comes in. Yeah, you're probably right, Kane, to be fair. Um, I do think... I mean, Champions League, what's that worth? You think, when you qualify for the group stages, because I've not actually... I've had the game since it came out, but I've not played in the Champions League yet, which is a bit criminal. I've been focusing on my lower league save. So what have people seen as the sort of money you get for getting into the group stages of the Champions League so far? Does anyone, um, does anyone remember what, what you're getting? Have a quick look here. It's another one we can cash in on here as well. And we'll wait on that though. Right, so let's just have a quick glance through and see. So that's not an issue. Silk. I'm not too bothered about that. So we've got about four millions worth so far. Bonjouin. Yeah, so that's that's another... Uh, so that's going to be about 10 million. That's 14 million. Let's fuck all there. Um, 14 million. That's the biggie. So that's going to take us to what, 30, 41 million, uh, 45 million, starting to add up, isn't it? 60 million, 66 million, 70 million. Yeah, so in at some point in the season, there's going to be about 70 million going out in 2020 around July to August time and that'll be transfer wise so 70 million going out at the moment we're holding firm with 82 million now if we get Champions League as well and I mean the group stages you can probably expect to get at least what 10 to 15 million for that that's without even thinking about the million you get for winning a game the 500k you get for drawing a game the gate receipts that come with it um, so it's about doable the thing I can't be doing is going and signing even more massive uh, transfer players <laughs> and here's another here's another example another one that's going to be added on to the instalments yeah league money uh, that's a good point actually yeah because for winning Getting uh, in the top four, we get quite a bit of money as well. So, And then there's also the TV rights money you get in the Champions League. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. It should be all right. It should be okay. Either way, it's a big chunk of money to be coming out of the bank, but um, hopefully we can cover it. Right, we've got Esposito, so I would like to get him straight out on the loan list. Uh, 
this kid's going to be awesome. Uh, where are we? Transfer status. Available for loan. My client would prefer to stay at Newcastle, but he is open speaking to other clubs. That's fine then. At least he's not going to throw his toys out the prompt. Um, yeah, I think it is, mate. We, we just... I don't know if you came into the stream after or before Kane, but we were going through a transfer embargo before I could make my offer for Haaland. And the sale fell through. Uh, Mike Ashley wasn't interested. Who's this guy? It's crap. Uh, Mike Ashley wasn't interested in selling in the end. Surprise, surprise. Very true to real life. Right, well, Leicester is actually quite a tough game. Now, there's two ways of going about this. We can either go with the more defensive... Uh, Longstaff's out. Pulled hamstring. Um, we can either go with the more defensive approach and play with the two DMCs based on the fact that they have generally Vardy, Iheanacho and Madison in the hole who are an absolute nightmare to play against. I really struggled. Um, I really struggled against them during the away game where we got absolutely slaughtered. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk and do FM at the same time. I'm not very good at that. Let me just get this sorted quickly because he's playing for the reserves and I don't want him to be. Now that I've got an issue in central midfield with injuries. Right, there we go. Fully focused, back on it. So, I'm not sure whether to go with the DMCs or stick with this because it is still a low defensive line. Hmm. We'll go with this. We'll go with this. Maybe a little bit risque, but... I should also be mindful of using Selk as well. Because we're going to need to sell him. That's for sure. And if I don't play him, he'll end up losing value. Souza played in the last game, half decent, but he's going to come off. And I think we'll go with that. Right, I'm going to save quickly, guys, because just in case we get a, a crash or something. Half time in the old game, it looks like it's 1 0 still to Chelton, I think. Is there any other football on tonight? Nothing of real interest. Hoffenheim against Augsburg, 1 1. Right, here we go. Quite a big game, really. Coming up against Leicester. I know they're only 13th, but they're tough team to play against as demonstrated by the way they annihilated us in um, in the last game then we're away to West Ham before we go to Sheffield United I'm not convinced about using this system when we've got Vardy, Iheanacho. Ah, right, okay, and now I feel much better. They're playing a different system to what they were when we came up against them and we were away from home. That is a bit more suited to, um, to our style of play, so that is good. When they're playing two up front and the attacking midfielder, oh, there we go, 
and the attacking midfielder in behind creates havoc when you're using a 4 4 2. You've got. Oh, Haaland. What are you doing? Yeah, so when they're playing two up front, attacking midfielder in behind, if you're playing a 4 4 2 and you've got no DMC, it's easy for the centre backs to go forward and try and. Oh, wow. Boom. Get in there. That is how you do it, baby. Great goal. Joelinton cuts in on his right foot. Bang. Right into the top corner. We'll have that all day long. Lovely jebly. Yes, yeah, so what I was saying is when you're playing a flat four um, and you don't have those DMCs, it's easy for centre-backs to be get overwhelmed because they've got three players to deal with. The AMC tends to move about a lot and that just drags them out of position. And when you've got Vardy and Iheanacho both running in behind, those balls over the top, especially with the patch, ooh, nearly, especially with the patch the way it is, it's just a nightmare. And that's what I found. I think we lost 4 or 5-1 in the end, but they, they could have absolutely romped all over us. Nearly. Haaland, come on, get your foot in. You're meant to be a pressing forward. Good. Go on. Back in again. Oh, wow. Oh, no, offside. Offside. I didn't think it touched Joe Ellington. What? I thought that was actually a header from um, Yedlin that was going in, but Joe Ellington must have touched it. Come on, make a tackle. Beltran. Bowen. Bruno. Go on, Joe Ellington. Oh, rubbish finish. Run back possession again. Come on, Clive. Are you faster than that? Rubbish. Good save by Dubravka. Well, we've had the lion's share of the game, that's for sure. Good ball. Joelinton, and he's in. Get in. 19th goal of the season. Thank you very much. From Beltran, if uh, anyone's looking for a deep-lying playmaker that can do other roles as well, he's fantastic. Passes like that, he can dribble, he can tackle, and he's actually not bad physically as well. So he's a good all-round midfielder, but he can do the playmaker role as well. Oh, no. That's only a bruised ankle, for God's sake. Man up. Owen, dilly dallying a little bit on the ball there, should have got it in quicker. Nearly from Andrewin. Oh, come on, guys. Well, I think we're going to leave Willems on because I could do with resting other players. Go on, Alan. Nice. Get in. 3 0. Haaland. Two games, two goals. See, like I said, easy. All day long we'll come up against this 4-5-1. Love playing against it. Because then you can play your 4-4-2. There's not as much as a threat in behind because there's only the one striker having to do all the work. And it just leaves you open to attack and enjoy the game. Um, sort of, yeah. Um, I was just double checking what they were saying about Willems in case he needed to come off, but he doesn't. Wellington. Oh. And then you can play beautiful attacking football just like this, which was the whole point of starting the save in the first place. It's when you come up against those awkward systems where they've maybe got three at the back, um, which can handle the forward line, but then they've got maybe like an AMC, a couple of strikers, they're playing the ball over the top and they've got fast forwards getting in behind as well. That's the sort of system that I really struggle against with this um, with this tactic, this type of setup. 
Right. Let's rest Bruno. Ugh, don't want to do that. Yeah, so we'll rest Bruno. I want to rest Bowen because he's a little bit tired. And I actually think we should rest Joelinton, possibly. Yeah, I think we should rest Joelinton because he's been awesome. So we want him fit for the next game, that's for sure. On Joeen. Great, Vardy's making his run through now. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't had any bookings, to be fair. Oh, that would have been a stunning goal. See that ball over the top again, but it's on all the time now. We've got Haaland and Guerri, both decent at getting in behind. Haaland, what was that? De Bruyne count to Shah, Clivert, Beltran again. He's such a good passer of the ball. Brilliant. Willems, Almir on to Haaland. Oh, linking up with Guerri, but couldn't get the shot away. It's another corner. Absolutely boss this game. Five clear cut chances to their two. 22 shots, 11 on target. The big question will come away from home against the top teams. If we are getting smashed in those games and screwing up the goal difference that we've built up, then we may well struggle for the top four because confidence will drop as well. And that's when you end up getting silly, complacent uh, mistakes against smaller teams Gueri how many times have I seen that that is why he needs learning out for the championship we need to get some more experience and try and get those attributes up before he plays I think to miss too many clear cut chances for my liking Yedlin come on Willems Howland again not quite Anjouin Williams back in and a beautiful goal. Fabian Shah. Lovely jubbly. Right, I'm going to ease off into cautious. Not because I'm worried about anything, but just to try and give the players a little bit of a breather before the next game. Haaland's in. Haaland can't score. He's missed a few sitters, to be fair, Haaland, which is frustrating. But... He has been capable getting in behind, so that's that's been promising to see. We just need, come on, get it out. We just need to see a little bit more from him, I think. That's silly. Why are you pissing about with the ball there? Well done, lads. Well done. Excellent. Right, away from home to West Ham. This could be an interesting game. Great. Williams in out for too long, so that's very good news. Just take a second to appreciate Joe Ellington. 19 goals from 19 starts. 18 in the league so far. Seriously impressive stats right there. Well... That's kind of bittersweet, that top result, Liverpool-Arsenal. Liverpool are going for the title, so if I'm looking at that, which is, to be honest, it's unrealistic, I would say, um, it's a bit gutting. However, Arsenal are the ones we're fighting against for that fourth spot, so that is a really good result for us in terms of getting Champions League qualification, potentially. Chelsea losing again, so that drifts them further away from the Champions League spots. Tottenham winning away from home, not so good. But we've got City and United playing now. So City have won. That stretches their lead in the champ uh, title race. Where in third, I think? Yeah. United Everton. This is quite a big game. Ah, United won 3 0. Bars. Yeah. 
So we're five points off top, but Liverpool do have a game in hand as well. And we are four points above Arsenal at the moment. So that's good. Could do with extending that a little bit before that real tough run kicks in. Because that's coming up very soon. There's only another couple of games, really. Um, and then we've got that stretch of tough away days and tough opponents as well. Really, these have cost us. This is what's cost us here. Uh, where is it? Leicester. Thrashing us. Crystal Palace, where we got a red card in the third minute at home. Uh, and drawing against Sheffield United at home. I mean, what was all that about? Also losing at home to Brighton. That was a terrible result. So those games there, where we were messing about with tactics and still trying to find our feet, they have really, really cost me. But this is where the season's going to be decided. These three games here, for me, massive games. If we lose all of those games, or don't get desirable results, we could end up dropping seven points over those three games, possibly, I reckon. At least. If that happens, Arsenal will have probably beaten us, um, and they're going to be playing catch-up again. We've only got a four-point gap, so we can't afford... A, an eight seven point swing at this stage in the season especially with what it would do to the confidence of the team that's a rather annoying wage hike some things you'd always look at what they're asking for in terms of bigger wages well it's done now so have a quick look at the squad see who there is to try and offload because I feel like the squad is huge and I know some players are going to be offloaded um, shortly, like Muto's got a transfer arranged, but it still feels like we've got loads of players in here. Well, hopefully we can find a club for Esposito. And what I think I'll do... I think hopefully we can get Gueri shipped out on loan. That gets rid of one of my um, top talented strikers because I don't want them just sat rotting in the first team, uh, getting no game time. I could put them in the reserves, but it's just not the same. We'll just let Gale go out on the loan. As long as someone's paying... Oh, they're not offering to pay anything. Huh. Oh, well. If I get him some game time, maybe someone will want to sign him. Right. West Ham away. Yep, so Guerrero's going out on loan to the Championship. I'm fine with that. We need to get some game time for Esposito now, um, unless we can get him out on loan. It's going to be a difficult mix doing that. We can do it in games like against Sheffield United, but we're in the business phase of the season, so there's not a lot of games left where we can give someone game time and not risk um, screwing up the result. Now, I'm not sure what sort of system West Ham will play here. So they generally play a 4-1-4-1. Based on that, I think we'll go with a 4-4-2 probably. Right, so Esposito's coming in. And Brewster's going to come in because Selk has got um, a little bit of a knock. Let's just see how we're doing. So Willems is going to have to come out. He is knackered. And I think, to be fair, I'm going to have to bring Yedlin off because he's looking a little bit jaded as well. And possibly Anjouin. I'm not a massive fan of doing that, but... 
Cliver. Yeah, you see, it's going to end up in a bloody second string side by the time I've made all these changes. I can probably stick with Joe Ellington Harland up front, which is a good thing. Belchin off. I'm going to have to bring Belchin off for Shelby. And I think we'll go with that. Oh, it's 2 1 now. <laughs> 2 1 now, Kane. Um, Charlton just scored again. Who scores for Hull? Was it Bowen? Sai is having a good season for Charlton. They're not doing brilliant. They're uh, they're you know they're kind of fighting near the relegation zone. But right now this could backfire on us a little bit. Sticking with the attacking mentality and not also not switching to uh, the defensive. Oh right, okay. We need to rethink this, guys. They're playing uh, with an attacking midfielder. So I'm going to feel this game out. I think we're going to we'll watch the first 10 minutes, try and get a feel for what's going on, and then I might have to switch to the other tactic because I, I have a bad feeling they're going to end up getting in behind. Go on, Haaland. You've got the legs. Run. Wow. Get in. That is why I paid £66 million for Haaland. What a first touch. And then before the defender gets a chance to get his tackle in, boom. That is how you do it. Three games, three goals. Like I said to you, that this could be the difference between us... Oof, between us getting Champions League or Europa League. Goals like that change seasons. Because we're away from home. Now we may go on and dominate the game. But if we don't, taking that chance could. Oh, go on. And again. Oh, oh you cheeky little beggar. Great link-up play. Joe Ellington's 20th of the season. Awful, awful play by West Ham. And I have a feeling things like that should get sorted in the match engine sooner rather than later by SI because when you're on the receiving end of that, it is very annoying. But we will take it. We will take it. Bowen did score. Yeah, thanks for letting me know, Kane. Ooh, Charlton almost got a penalty there as well. So Maxi Marman, he scores. Get in. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Again, that ball over the top. Sam Maximan. Boom. It's only his third goal of the season. Reason being, he's been missing all sorts, all season long. So it's good to see him get on the score sheet. Ping pong. Oh, Sosa. Right, we're going to have to tell him to ease off the tackles. I was 3-0 up against Crystal Palace at home. Ooh. We got a red card and then it just transformed the game completely. After that red card, we ended up losing 4-3. Jordan Ayew was a complete monster. Yeah, I think you're probably right, mate. Is that allowed? Yeah, it is. Right, we're actually going to switch system. It's maybe not the wisest decision, but I do, if they get another goal now, all of a sudden the pressure is going to be piled on us. So let's get some DMCs on and try and show, shut up shop for the rest of the half. We'll reevaluate in the second half. Oh no. Oh, it's backfired massively. Oh. I've told him to ease off tackles. Haaland. 2-4. Not quite sure what happened there. I wasn't concentrating. So Sosa with the long throw. 
Um, massive scramble in the area and goal. We'll take it. No, 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 no. He's going off, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> fuck. Hmm. That's frustrating. That is really frustrating. Down to 10 men. problem we've got is with the one striker forward now that ball is going to be constantly recycled back to them every time we go forward there's no one to play up alongside Haaland he's never going to get knocked down himself so we're going to have to get extremely lucky with any balls over the top God, they're having so many chances now. This is going to be a very, very long second half, isn't it? I can't believe that was only one half. It felt like a whole game. Come on, keep the ball moving. Haaland, he's through. Oh, what was that? What was that? Good pass. Kraft, get the ball in. Fuck. What are you doing? There's a player running. What are you doing? Fuck me. Jesus. Awful defending. The AI is just shite on this thing. That red card has fucking done us in. Again, screwed over by a red card. I can't blame the AI for that, to be fair. I probably didn't help myself oh, switch into this tactic. I was thinking getting the DMCs on would help show things up, but in reality, now I think about it, I think it's a slightly higher defensive line, so if anything, it's probably contributed a little bit to the problem. Come on, Haaland. Fucking hell, you're faster than that. Good save by keeper. Kraft. Right, we're going to change things a little bit here, guys. What just happened there? Oh, I just had another red card. <laughs> right. We're going to change things up. We're going to go back to this system. 
I'm going to have one central midfielder. And we're going to go for it. Um, probably bring Clivert on as well, I think. Just make sure these guys are told to ease off tackles. There we go. There we go. Oh, before I even got a chance to do the change. What a fucking nightmare. Like I said, games like this will be the difference between Champions League and Europa League. If we uh, go on Haaland, yes. 5-5. Five, five. This really is Kevin Keegan style. There's going to be a winner in this. It is not going to stay a draw. Oh, why? Why are you heading it straight back to him? Come on. Go on, Cliver. Don't fuck it up. Why? Why, 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 why? Go on. Go on, lad. Play it through. There's a fucking pass. There's a pass. Oh. This game frustrates me sometimes. Haaland scored a hat-trick. That's the only positive I can see from this. Go on. Esposito. Oh, God. Come on! Six clear cut chances. You can't take any of them. Oh well. Come on, Cliver. Pass the damn ball. You can't shoot. Don't shoot. Pass. He does so many good things with his dribbling and just ruins it. Oh! oh! I don't believe it. Bowen, on the 94th minute, 6 5. Oh. This game really does... I think he megged him as well. Really does put you through the ringer sometimes. Come on, blow the whistle, referee. Blow the whistle. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That was one hell of a game, guys. What a game. What other results have we got as well? So... <laughs> Do you know what, Kane? That is probably my favourite comment so far on all the streams I've done. I love it if we beat them. Love it. I'll be saying that when we come up against United, that's for sure, because look... They are just behind us by one point. They drew away from home to Leicester, so that's good news. Uh, Tottenham Chelsea, Tottenham drew at home, so that, again, that's another really good result for us. They've dropped two points there. Man City kept up their winning run, as did Liverpool. And Arsenal, Arsenal drew 0 0. 
That is really, really good. So that leaves us six points clear of fifth now. Still a long way to go in the season. But that's good because we've got, like, like I keep saying, we've got a really tough schedule coming up. So we need desperately to get results while we can. Two cup games. So I'm going to rest my players against Sheffield United. I'm going to play them against Man City, I think. Um, because it would be nice to reach the final, seeing as we got um, a good result in the first leg. Just um, switching things up a little bit with Kenner. I was going to train him as a central defender. I kind of, I'm going to train him as a deep line playmaker for now, just because the sort of stats he'll be training, I could look to bring him in as a fullback at some point as well. So it won't be a waste training him as a deep line playmaker. I'm proper hyped up after that game. Gale's going on loan to Cardiff. So we've got two players in the championship on loan now. Right, here we go. FA Cup fourth round, then we've got Man City in the League Cup, and it looks to me like there's a little bit of a gap before the next game. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Kane says, I didn't think Haaland would have hit the ground running like he has. I didn't as well, to be fair, mate. I honestly thought it would take him longer. Uh, hit the ground running is a 40 hours. Uh, I thought being young, it would take six months, a year to settle in. I've actually signed him with Roma during when I was testing a tactic, which failed miserably. But he was sensational from the second he got in at Roma. So I did have a, I had a feeling he could do well. I didn't think he'd do this well. I mean, how many, is that, how many goals is that now? Uh, I think he scored five from three, has he? Something like that. Or is it even more? Five from three starts, so that is a really, really good record to kick off his career. Right, well, you can go home. I do not want you passing that on to other people. He's got a cold. Now, the other thing I probably need to look at as well is a right back. I'm not going to now because... Yedlin and Krath are doing a good enough job for this season. When I get to the summer, probably going to have to have a look at it then, I think. I mean, in fairness, you look at the squad, we've actually got a very, very good squad, even for Europe. We've got enough players when they're all settled. <laughs> I'm just a little bit worried about Selk. If I'm going to offload him, which I, I'd like to do, I'd like to offload Selk. And then I can have a Gui, um, oh God, Esposito um, and Gueri as my backup strikers next season. But at the same time, Joe Ellington's playing so well and I'm not bringing Haaland off after the way he's been playing. Having said that, the good news is we've got an opportunity to do just that now because the next game is in the Cup. And like I said before, I'm going to rest players. I'm not sure about Kenner being rested in fairness. Uh, actually, Longstaff's injured, so Kenner can play. Switch those two around. Bowen's going to come out for Almeir. I want to give Almeir on some game time. Sosa will be out for a little bit, so no matter what, he's going to have to come off anyway. Uh, where's he gone? 
Where are you? Willems, there he is. Anjouin will come back in for the next game. Shark can come off Lathels. Uh, I think that's pretty much us about there looking at that. Might be interesting to see how Selk and Esposito get on um, playing up front together. So we've got Man City after this. That's why I'm resting players. Then we've got a huge game three days later. Arsenal away from home. That's their opportunity to get back. Now, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. I don't know whether to stick with the system I'm using now or switch to Naps um, Sicilian. I'll have to have a think on that. Uh, Freddy Comment Kane. Uh, with Joe Ellington netting so often, do you think he will get an international call up soon? I don't know, mate. I think there's a lot of Brazilians ahead of him, in all honesty. But he's bloody playing well, isn't he? Be nice. Be nice to see it happen. I certainly don't see it happening in real life anyway. At the moment, unfortunately, he's not really doing it, is he? See, this is one of these systems I was talking to you guys about earlier. I'm not a fan of coming up against three at the back with that little triangle going on there tends to create havoc. Now the only upside is we're the home team, we're on good form, so we could dominate um, this game. If that happens and they don't get the opportunity to cause us problems, then we'll probably be alright. He's been brilliant and great link-up player with the second forward uh, since I've been watching. Yeah, no, to be fair mate, before tonight, Joe ellington has been freaking brilliant as well. He's, if anything, me signing Haaland's kind of taken a bit of the shine off him. But Joe ellington has been awesome. Absolutely brilliant. And to be honest, I was a little bit worried about him at the start of the season. I was, uh, I was thinking that his lack of acceleration and off-the-ball movement might be an issue. But not been the case at all. He's deadly. Almiron. This is a difficult thing with the winners. They keep giving the ball away and screwing up chances. Oh. Nearly. Good cross. Oh, no. The Bravka. Well, we've only had one shot on target, and that tells its own story. The upside is they don't seem to be making much themselves. Not much worthwhile, anyway. Yeah, and that's the issue, Kane. I don't know whether the wingers are the issue or whether it is the match engine. I could very well go and pay an absolute fortune next season for a different winger. Someone like a Jaden Sancho, that sort of player. Obviously, I probably wouldn't get him, but you know what I mean. And then I could end up having exactly the same issues. So I'm more inclined to think it's probably the match engine. But having said that, other than Bowen, all my wingers have pretty shite finishing, so it wouldn't surprise me if um, actually it is the wingers. We need something to happen here. We keep getting the ball forward and attacking, but we're not looking like we're going to score yet. I think we're going to switch the system to the Sicilian. It's got a higher line, so we're going to end up further up the pitch. Um, 
but those DMCs may draw Sheffield United onto us. That's my logic anyway. Ooh, Selk. He had a chance there, should have scored. We'll also make a substitution in a minute. That could probably make the difference. I'm afraid it's going to be Selk coming off. I'm going to bring Haaland on. I'm also going to bring... Oh, da, 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 San Maximum Almeron off. He's, he's not been very good, has he? Get Bowen on. And I think I'll probably also have Shelby off as well. Maybe. Yeah, I think I'll have Shelby off for Beltran. He has picked out some wonderful passes in the last couple of games. So we'll go with that. Kenna, Haaland, back in play, come on make the tackle, it's been a difficult match so far to be honest, we have played a second string team so it is to be expected that we're not going to walk the game but I would have hoped for a bit more than this, in fairness. Better tell Jetro Williams to ease off the tackles, or else we might have another red card issue. Bowen. Good ball. Oh, yes. So Maximum almost screwed that up. However, we'll let him off. It's squeezed in. Bowen. Over. And this will be a pretty good result if um, if we hang on. Being able to rest all those players for the next two games is vital to A, having any chance of getting through to the League Cup final and B, trying to pull off an up Go on, go on, Ireland. Yes, get in. He's done it again. Sixth goal. Um, yeah, and also having any chance against Arsenal away from home because if we can nick a draw from that game, nearly. Yeah, he did do his best to miss it, mate. I'm assuming you're talking about a Sam Maximam effort there. Um, he's probably illegally gambling on the game. No, that was rubbish. Um, yeah, if we can get a draw at least against Arsenal, that'll be huge because that's their opportunity to gain on us and it's going to give them impetus going into the last games of the season. Haaland again is penalty. It's got to be. Yes. He has probably been one of the players that's changed the game. I know Sam Maximum got the goal, but Haaland just seems to be creating all kinds of problems in behind. Game... Set match. Let's just switch to cautious to rest some legs. Craft. Beltran. Good ball over the top. Chase it. Chase it down. Oh, God, that was a bit of a bad challenge, wasn't it? Luckily, he didn't catch him. Right, big game coming up, guys. Big, big game. Away from home to Man City. Second leg of the League Cup. Semi-final. Ah, oh, nearly. That two massive, you can think about it, away from home to Man City and away from home to Arsenal. If we ended up 
losing both of those games, the damage it would do to the morale may cause us a little bit of a problem because this is a confidence tactic in my opinion. The, the better the forward line are playing and the higher that morale is, the more chance there is of them taking their opportunities when they come along. Right, here we go. Is it stupid that I'm a little bit nervous about this? You go through an entire season, tweaking tactics, messing about with stuff, going through the stress of a 6-5 win away from home to West Ham, red cards, injuries, and then it all comes down to one game that could define the season. I think that's what makes the FM for me. I'm not sure um, if Arsenal have had a league game while we were playing in the FA Cup. There we are. Oh no, sorry, they're in the FA Cup. Of course they are. Idiot. Ignore me. I'm just desperate for Arsenal to drop points. That's going to be a tough run as well afterwards. I mean, we've got Man United and Chelsea, I think it was, at home. Now, I know we're at home, but still, they those are tough, tough teams to come up against. And I'm going to have some difficult decisions to make with the system as well. FA Cup fifth round draw. Let's see who we've got. <laughs> Are you joking? Liverpool or Tottenham away from home. Right, yeah, that's not going to happen, is it? It's all right. We don't need the FA Cup. The league is what matters. It's all about the League Cup anyway. FA Cup what? Right, we'll we take a 2-1 lead into this game. So a draw is fine. I get the feeling that it's going to be one of those games. I'm going to stick with the 4-4-2, I think, because that performed really well um, during the first game. And we're going to stick with the usual lineup, the one that's done us very proud so far this season. Um, who am I missing? Who am I missing? I might need to put Brewster into there. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Uh, Anjouin's coming back in. Excellent. That's really good news. He's been suspended. Actually, those two are meant to switch around, I think. Uh, why am I doing that? That's wrong. I think that's right. Balls, I can't remember. It'll do. Um, Willems is... Uh, do I play Sosa or do I play Willems? I'm going to play Willems. He's the better player. I think that'll do, guys. I think that'll do. Yes, let's do this, shall we? Uh, do the AI play a weaker squad in the FA Cup? It depends who it is, uh, Kane. I've not seen them do it so far. All the teams I've... I mean, look at that. That That is full strength. De Bruyne, De Bernardo Silva, Sterling, Aguero, Laporte, Stones. That's the best team they could play. Um, I've not seen it here. And I've also... See, why would I say pressure is off? It's not... Remind the players that there's no pressure. No, I'm not saying that. Of course there's pressure. We are underdogs here, and that suits us down to the ground. Let's go and cause an upset. That's what you want to be saying. Yeah, I haven't seen it so far, mate. Uh, not in the League Cup. 
in the FA Cup, um, to be fair, when I've been playing with York, um, even against the top teams, they've not been resting players against York. So I don't think so. I don't think so, mate. I guess it depends who you are and who you come up against. But like I say, playing with York in the FA Cup, I've um, I've come up against full strength teams pretty much. Like for instance, Bournemouth when we beat them, they had Callum Wilson up front, uh, full strength back back line. There's only a couple of players missing. I think that was probably from injury or fatigue. Yeah, they're putting putting a bit of the press on us here. Could do with not conceding early. Under pressure, under pressure. To be honest, if we could nick a goal, that would really, really help. Um, it just mean that even if they got two goals, we're still going to have extra time. Oh, what, why is the keeper not coming out? Oh, mm, dear. And why we're making a challenge when there's two defenders covering? I have no idea. They're bossing this. Absolutely dominating. Yeah, another um, another match engine issue there, Kane. It's not good, is it, to be fair? It's not great. If I hear from Miles, it's your tactic one more time. I swear down. Come on. They're just first to the ball. Every challenge. And what the fuck is that? Why? Why? It's the defender stood there. He's there. You're there. Make the challenge. Oh, so annoying. Look at this. So Mendy passes the ball into Aguero. You've got two centre-backs. Two defenders. What are, you, what are you all doing? Fucking hell. There's no players anywhere to pull them out of position. It's ridiculous. Torn apart. Absolutely torn to shreds. Still feel screwed over to be honest. The penalty and then that second goal is just ridiculous. It shouldn't be happening. Couldn't give a shit what Mal says. It's bollocks. The match engine is not right. Need to fix it. Now don't get me wrong, we don't deserve to win this game at all. We deserve nothing other than to go out based on what I've seen so far. That I'm fine with that and accept that. What I don't accept is having to watch my defenders run on the fucking spot. That's ridiculous. It doesn't happen in real life. I don't care what the stats say at the end of the game. I'm watching the game. I want to know what my players are doing wrong when we are conceding goals. And when the match engine isn't showing that, it's ridiculous. Come on, Joe Wellington. I've had very few chances so far. Right, well, we are struggling using this 4 4 2. I'm thinking of switching um, to the Sicilian. Let's see if that helps at all. I'll also bring Beltran off. And I think we'll bring probably. Ooh, who should we bring off? I'm going to have Selk on for... There. Not on 
do. And last substitution, we'll go with Almiron on for Bowen, I reckon. Last roll of the dice. See if we can't get ourselves back into the game. At 4 2, we'd need a couple of goals and hope that they're not to concede as well. So I can't can't see it happening. It's a shame, but still to reach the semi final is not bad going in the first season. God, they're playing such a good game possession wise as well. They also seem to be playing quite deep, so when we do get the ball and we're making those passes over top, there's not an awful lot to find. Almiron. Willems. Oh, that would have made the game interesting. They've absolutely bossed this. Absolutely bossed it. Um, I would say I've probably made another mistake tactically there. I shouldn't have lined up with a 4-4-2. I should have probably gone with the Sicilian uh, using the DMCs. But I have used that flat 4-4-2 before in tough games away from home and it's done all right. So I honestly thought coming up against the 4-5-1 it would just about do it. But I was clearly wrong there. Yeah, it's like a completely different City team. And like I said, that is why I picked the tactic I did. But having said that, I am away from home, aren't I? So I should have known better. I've got that Sicilian there for these types of games. I should have used it, really. Come on, Haaland. Pressure. Go on. Oh, ho, ho. eight minutes, guys. Eight minutes to score a goal. Come on. Complete fuck up from their back line, that. Eight minutes. Come on. Come on. Almiron's picked up a knock, tight calf. Oh, rubbish ball, come on. Better than that. It's not gonna happen, chaps. It's not gonna happen. Boo! <laughs> oh well. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Regardless of what happens in the first leg, do not judge the second leg based on the performance. Yeah, you're about right there, uh, Kane. It seems to happen a lot, and we've got quite a few suspensions coming up as well which is a bit of a nightmare when you consider the fixture list we've got coming up <sighs> a little bit gutted there a little bit gutted I honestly thought we could have made the final that goal that they scored towards the end of the game did us in I hope not how's it going mate did you see I have given you VIP, mate? We are on more than the right path, in fairness, pal. I have took your advice with the 442, so we're using that. It's working well. And I've backed it up with the Sicilian um, because it's got a slightly deeper defensive line. So that one works reasonably well for the tougher games away from home. So, 
just to catch you up with where we are not we have won an absolute shed load tonight i started pre-stream with the west ham game i think it was so we won 4-1 uh, we went on to beat crystal palace that was a crazy game uh, the Everton game was a great one away from home and I think I started the stream probably with the Peterborough FA Cup game it's been playing sailing since really good That we won 6-5 against West Ham uh, we got a red card there and we were winning by quite a margin end up throwing it away we were losing 5-3 I think I might be wrong in saying that um, no we weren't we were losing 5-4 sorry and then we came back to win 6-5 with a last minute goal. 90 minutes plus 5, Bowen. And we've literally just played Man City in the FA Cup and I made a complete tactical blunder. My fault. I went with a 4-4-2. I should have gone with a Sicilian and we got torn to shreds. Sorry, did I know who is free right now, mate? Oh, pre loot is it? What what's it free on? PC. All right, cool. Nice. I might have a look at that. I've never really been a pro Evo guy. I was no, I lie. I was many 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 moons ago, back when I was in school. But then FIFA really stepped it up, and ever since, um, I've been FIFA over that. But even FIFA, I've not really played recently. Been that obsessed with the new FM and getting pissed off with the match engine. Well, this Arsenal game is massive, guys. Absolutely massive. We're going to stick with the Sicilian tactic, which is what I should have done in the last game. And like, um, like Kane was saying, I've signed Haaland. You'd be disgusted to see how much for not. It's, um, yeah, it doesn't make happy reading for my accountant, put it that way. Um, anyone who's interested, Charlton were 2-1 up and the score uh, conceded right at the end. I'm not sure who scored it. Uh, more than 50 million, I'm afraid not. More than 50 million. I think it was something like 66 million in the end. Kane will correct me if I'm wrong. We can always check. Yeah, a lot of money, mate. On instalments, so we're going to earn an awful lot of money come July, but it'll be worth it. It is a lot of money, mate, but you should, <laughs> you should see some of the goals he scored. Absolutely amazing. Was it 90 plus 6? Oh my god. That was like our West Ham game, just with fewer goals. Right, let's have a look. So, find Haaland for your nut, so you can see what he's been doing. Selk's done well. Unfortunately, he's now been sidelined due to Haaland coming in and been a beast of a player. Seven goals in four games. Not bad going. I've also signed Esposito. I'm tr I've been trying to loan him out, but um, so far, no success on that. Just going to make sure I don't need to register anyone. Shouldn't do. It's a big, big... I, th I think what we'll do tonight, guys, is we're going to play the Arsenal game, just because I'm really intrigued to see what happens. And then I'm probably going to call it a night, because there's a quite a big gap before the next round of games. 
So Arsenal are fifth. Um, there, I think we've got a four-point gap to them. Let's have a quick check of that. Yeah. Oh no, sorry, we've got a six-point gap over Arsenal. So there is a bit of a cushion there. But I really, really don't want to go losing because we've just lost to Man City. Another loss is going to really damage um, the morale and the momentum. United have just won. That's a massive result for them. So yeah, we, we don't want to be losing ground here. Getting right to the business end of the season, we've got two really tough home games against United and Chelsea coming up. We struggled like hell against Chelsea during the away game. So I think they're going to give us a bit of a game at home as well. Here we go. Right, let's see if anyone is back. Sam Maximum is, so he can come in. Almeron is not going to get used because he looks knackered. I think that's going to do it, to be fair, chaps. Do you know what? I'm actually going to bring Maximum in for Cliver because Cliver's not done a lot in the last couple of games. There we go, guys. Last game of the night. Let's do this. If we can avoid losing here, be massive. Joe Ellington. Thanks for the follow, Kane. Hopefully, we'll see you around in one of the other um, one of the other streams, mate. Willems Bowen created a couple of chances, but they have real quality going forward. Lacazette is um, he punished us, put it that way, in the first game of the season. Oh, no, come on. Get out. Oh. Riding our luck, guys. We're riding our luck. Come on, Bowen. In, in, in. Shoot. Oh, what was that? Come on, I don't like going backwards, it makes me nervous. Go down the wing, come on. Play it faster than that. Really frustrating when there's good passes on and they don't take them. There's two there, one for Williams to get down to Bowen on the wing. Once Bowen finally got the ball, there was a really good crossing opportunity there. He didn't take it, he went for the shot instead. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's it, mate. But their playmakers could make a difference. They've got some like Pepe as well. He's really skillful. The sort of one who could just go on a mazy run on the counter and punish us. Beltran, Yedlin, San Maximum, Beltran again. Come on, someone take a shot. Oh, Haaland, Haaland. Bellerin, get a foot in, come on guys, tackle. Still nil nil though, we're still in this, come on. Willems, ball, not over the top, that's not good enough. Go on, you're in, pass it. Why, why shoot, why shoot, why shoot from there? So many other things you could have done with that ball. <sighs> Fucking hell. I'm trying 
trying these little dink balls over the top and it's not working, is it? Not working. Can't say we haven't had opportunities. We have, we've made chances, we've got forward, we've had a couple of good set pieces as well, but the big difference is they've taken their opportunity when it's come along. Go on, Bowen. Get down the wing. Get a fucking cross in. God, they're so good at the back. And I don't know what we're doing defensively there. Shambles. Everything that we've done, they've had an answer for so far. I think we're going to have a, a switch up of personnel in a minute. Come on, get your bloody foot in. Someone. It's on get stuck in. I don't understand why we're just letting them play the ball around like this. Go on, Maxi Man. You've got the legs. Run. Oh, God, no. How did we not score there? God, the lack of crossing is doing my head in. Fuck. Come on, Sam Maximum. Run with the ball. Oh. oh. <laughs> That was an early goal of the season. Right, Joe Wellington's coming off for Selk. Okay. And I think we'll have Bruno off for Shelby. And Bowen's going to come off as well. Bowen off for Cliver, I think. Right, half an hour left of the game, guys. It's a double-edged sword, really, because we need to get forward and have a chance. We're struggling um, with them at the back. Oh, my God. How many more chances are we going to miss like that? Unbelievable. But also, they're so dangerous on the counter. You look at the speed they've got in behind all across the pitch. Um, go on, Selk. Some Maximum in. Oh, Haaland again. Oh, how close is that? Mm. We've been very unlucky here. Very unlucky. Deserved more, I think. I'm not saying we deserve to win the game. But we definitely deserve a draw out of this. Oh, God. Dude, come on. Just turn to ease off the tackles a bit. I don't want a red card. I think we're going to do a quick shout of get forward as well, actually. It might cost us, but at the end of the day, we've got nothing to lose now. I'm not sure they're going to crack, to be honest, mate. I think it'd have happened by now. Game over, innit? Gutting. Gutted, gutted, gutted. Two games we did not want to lose, unfortunately. Uh, coming up against that sort of quality away from home, it's hard work.
Yeah, no, you're probably right, Kane. I think there's not a lot we can do about that. Come on, pass the ball, Haaland. Fuck's sake. Is there one more chance in it? No. We did everything but score a goal in that game. A little bit gutted, to be honest. But we're still three points ahead of them. Got a better goal difference as well. And that is another tough game out of the way, isn't it? Looking at the schedule. Yeah, you're probably right. I think it was the, the clear-cut chance that was a goal as well. Looking at the schedule, we've got United and Chelsea at home in the next games. They're going to be huge games, massive. Um, and we've actually, to be fair, those three away games, they're not going to be easy either. We've struggled against Brighton at home. And we've struggled against Wolves at home. So going away from home is going to be difficult. Callum, Callum Wilson for Bournemouth will be troubling behind as well. And like you say, Liverpool last game of the season. We've got Man City at home as well. We've got Tottenham away. So looking at that set of fixtures there is a little bit worrying. We'll see. Anyway, guys, I'm going to sign off at that. So I really do appreciate you all coming by, getting involved with the chat. It really does make the night for me, um, having people's chat to as well while we play the game. And I'll be back on Sunday night. There's a chance, actually, guys, I may be actually streaming tomorrow as well. But if you follow us on Twitter, and obviously on Twitch as well, I'm going to throw up um, an early message to say if we're going to be doing that. I'm going to be up on Sunday night, Sunday from 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I don't know whether that'll be with this or with my York City save. I'm really tempted to do this one again, but we'll see how I get on. So thanks so much, guys. Um, and I will catch you next time. Um, and Kane, watch out because I'm going to give you VIP status, mate. Uh, so next time you come in, you'll have a couple of nice little goodies waiting for you because uh, I've enjoyed the chat tonight. See you later, guys.